It goes without saying that Street Fighter II's sheer unadulterated dominance of the early 90s set the precedent for all future fighting games, moving the genre from what could be described as clunky to a global competitive scene that we still see even to this day. So with such a groundbreaking title, you'd imagine Capcom would be ultra judicious with their character creations. But of course not, no. They just base them on real people and sued others who also base theirs on the same Japanese mythology. So, yeah, with such a haphazard approach, it's obvious that the House of Hagar made quite a few boneheaded decisions during development, and none more than naming the characters themselves. So, this episode, we take a look at these person permutations, these switched selves, and these improvised individuals. As I say, but... Hello you, I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt, Street Fighter's hilariously neurotic history of renaming characters. As an English person, I've never met a single girl called Cammy, nor a married one come to think of it. I mean, what does Cammy even mean? Is it short for Camellia or something? Well, according to Street Fighter lore, Cammy got her name from Sakura Kasuganu after developing amnesia, as she reminded Sakura of a neighbourhood cat with the same name. But in real life, coming up with such a ridiculous name could be down to it being a desperate last minute change by Capcom, as digging into the arcade version of Super Street Fighter 2's code Cammy was actually intended to be called Sarah, pretty much up until the last moment of development. So, what's with the change then, Larry? I hear you ask. Well, there's never been any official announcement as to why Cammy was changed from Sarah, but at an educated guess, it's most likely down to another rather iconic fighting game released within weeks of Super Street Fighter 2, Virtua Fighter. You see, there's an unwritten rule that no two characters can share the same name within the fighting genre. Well, unless they're called Ryu for some reason. But one of the three female combatants in Virtua Fighter was Sarah Byrant. So catching wind of Sega's polygonal pugilists and only a three week window between the launch of these two now legendary titles, Capcom must have made the last minute decision to rename everyone's favorite leotarded Lady Limey to something less confusing. Albeit, one more stupid. So, from an unknown Street Fighter name change to an infamous but now largely forgotten one. The Japanese version of Street Fighter 2 had three of the four bosses named as Bullrog, the Spanish knifey man, Vega, the red autocrat looking bloke, and M. Bison, the boxer. However, with the Western release, Capcom USA renamed Bullrog to Vega, Vega to M. Bison, and M. Bison to Bullrog. Everybody getting this? Why? Well, multiple reasons, really. Capcom USA didn't want to associate the boxing character and their wholesome family-friendly fighting game with the actual, in-real-life boxer, Mike Tyson, who was serving a lengthy prison sentence at the time. So they slapped the M. Bison agnomen on the guy dressed as a Nazi. Is that ironic? Or poetic. <laughs> I don't know. Sagat obviously kept his name as the Cycloptic Baldy Locks has already been established in the Street Fighter universe as the final boss of the original Street Fighter. But the reason Capcom USA rotated the names in that specific order was because they considered Vega to be a rather weak name for a final boss, feeling Bison was far more apt for a strong character. All this work just to avoid resemblance to the feisty lughole nommer. Despite the fact it's quite clearly supposed to be him. Capcom considering Spaniards to be weak, however, yeah, I'm not touching that one with a 10 foot claw. <laughs> it's also rumoured that Capcom USA were also worried that Nintendo still had the game rights to Mike Tyson with the NES title Mike Tyson's Punch Out. But that license had long since expired by then. But that wouldn't be the only time these three bosses would be renamed as a whole name changing situation makes character selecting in an international esports competition rather confusing. 
the players renamed all the fighters again. From M. Bison slash Vega to Dictator, Bullrog slash M. Bison to Boxer, and Vega slash Bullrog to Lord Stabbington. Yeah, I think I got that one right. Bloody Wikipedia. Good old Kenneth Masters. Mr. Red Jim Jams himself has been a staple of this series since the 1987 original. But for years in the series, he was only ever known as just Ken in the game. So where did the Masters surname come from, I hear you ask? Well, bizarrely, it never originated in any game at all, but with the merchandise. You see, when Street Fighter 2 was making packets for Capcom, the first thing they did after seeing all that lovely money rolling in was to license the heck out of their characters. One of the first licensees to obtain rights were toy company Hasbro, who wanted to add the Street Fighter team to their G.I. Joe line of action figures. However, Hasbro weren't too comfortable about releasing a toy just called Ken. I mean, after all, the most popular girl's toy of all time, Barbie, had a very famous boyfriend by the name of Ken. So either out of fear of possibly being sued by Mattel, or wanting to avoid confusion, they gave Ken the surname of Masters, as in he was the master of his martial arts, just to cover their bases. Look, no one ever said Hasbro were creative with their paranoia. Now, this has never officially been confirmed as the reason Ken received a cognomen, but out of the entire line Hasbro produced of G.I. Joe Street Fighter figures, Ken was the only one of two to receive an additional last name. Capcom liked the new surname so much, they made it official canon from then on. So, you can most likely thank Barbie's plastic life partner for putting her willies up Hasbro into giving Ken a full name. Our next segment are names that, while later regarded as official canon, were added completely out of nowhere. For instance, can any of you tell me what Ryu's surname is? No? Anyone? It's Hoshi. Yup, his full name is Ryu Hoshi. Ryu received a surname from the original Street Fighter movie, as, for some reason, the producers insisted on characters having full names. Don't believe me? Sagat also received the first name from the movie too. Victor, with a K. Why Sagat has a Russian name when he's Thai is anyone's guess. But Capcom liked both names enough to make them canon. But if it's not the movie adding monikers to the combatants, it's the toy line. Now, we've already seen Ken receive a last name to avoid copyright issues. But Chun-Li also received one for completely zero reason. Chun-Li Yang, spelt X-I-A-N-G, which the movie also used but decided to respell it as Z-A-N-G, completely negating how you're supposed to pronounce Yang. Finally, even everyone's favourite fighting flat top, Guile, also received a permutation. Not from the toy line or the movie this time, but from the animated series. The cartoon decided to give him the first name William to William Guile, which the movie also took and gave him a middle initial to William F. Guile. One more thing, I've heard a few people adamantly insist Guile is pronounced Gwil, and I've absolutely no idea where that came from. He may resemble Egon from the real Ghostbusters on steroids, but Charlie is one of the first characterial laws in Street Fighter. From originally being mentioned in Guile's ending in Street Fighter 2, to finally making a playable appearance in Street Fighter Alpha. However, Mr. Nash's journey has just been one long argument between Capcom's Japanese and US divisions. As previously mentioned, Charlie's first reveal was in Guile's backstory in Street Fighter 2 where he was William's war buddy who had been murdered by M. Bison in Cambodia. However, this was more a case of the translator taking some creative liberties from the names, as not only was Charlie called Nash in the Japanese original, 
there was no mention of Cambodia at all. Guile's wife, who persuades her husband not to kill Bison in retaliation, is called Yuria in the original, renamed Julia in the Western version, then renamed again to Jane in later ports. And if the constant name changes weren't confusing enough, Capcom USA retconned Charlie's backstory again for the Street Fighter movie, where he was now missing instead and then genetically mutated into Blanca. By Delsim. Yeah. However, with the release of Street Fighter Alpha, which is set before the events of Street Fighter 2, Capcom Japan stuck to their guns by insisting he was called Nash. But once again, Capcom USA poo-pooed that notion and renamed him back to Charlie to not only keep in line with their original changes, but also because they told Capcom Japan it was a stupid name and no one in the US had Nash as a first name. Ironically, it wouldn't be until the second live-action Street Fighter movie, The Legend of Chun-Li, where the producers decided to merge the two names together, retconning Nash as Charlie's surname. With Capcom liking the change so much, they finally canonised the full name with the release of Street Fighter 4. And finally, for good measure, Capcom then turned Charlie into a zombie for Street Fighter 5. But, you know, <laughs> baby steps. But hello you, I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five things I've put on me bar. Hello you, thanks ever so much for watching, be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes, click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified, and be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now.